Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton. And honestly, a few hours ago, I got super excited because I just heard that we've received one of the first images of the area uh, near the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. And um, the scientists released the images of what they've discovered. So the reason I got excited is because um, for the longest time now, we've been actually waiting for the first ever image of the supermassive black hole. And I actually thought the news is coming from the famous Event Horizon Telescope. The telescope that uh, for about two years now has actually been analyzing the data uh, collected from several um, dozens of telescopes around the world in order for us to actually get the first ever image of the black hole. But turns out it wasn't really coming from that particular team, so it kind of made me a little bit sad. But nevertheless, though, we actually now have a much better picture of what's happening in the middle of our galaxy, where the supermassive black hole is. And the image we've received um, has actually uh, been the most accurate and also the highest resolution of all of the images we have so far. Now, let me actually tell you uh, what we've seen. But before that, let me tell you a little bit about what we predicted to see. So uh, back in the 70s, an astrophysicist by the name uh, Jean-Pierre Luminet predicted um, that uh, the black holes, uh, at least uh, massive black holes that have an accretion disk, would look something like this. Now, this was actually done way, way before any computer simulations. It was actually done um, practically by hand, although he did use a very interesting technique for this. He used an IBM punch card um, from 1960s that was able to actually create this beautiful image um, based on the mathematics that he had uh, himself created. Now, obviously, today we have much better simulations. As a matter of fact, one of the more recent uh, black holes and probably the most famous ones is from the movie Interstellar. The black hole that forms pretty much the center of the movie um, is very, very impressive, extremely, extremely beautiful. But according to uh, Luminet and also according to the scientists who essentially created this for the movie, Keep Thorn, um, this is not really the most realistic black hole in the world. As a matter of fact, it is very simplified and very simplistic. Here is actually a much, much more accurate representation of what a uh, supermassive black hole might look like. And as you can see, what's important to notice here is that, uh, let me actually just remove the camera for a second, it's not symmetrical. It has different uh, sides that are actually um, different in luminosity. As a matter of fact, this side here is brighter than this side because the actual flow of matter goes this way. And when the matter comes toward you, um, its luminosity is increased because of the Doppler effect. And when the matter moves away from you, the luminosity decreases, as does the actual color. So there's a lot of blue shifting going on on this side and a lot of red shifting going on on the other side. Another good representation is right here showing you how um, unsymmetrical or, or I guess not symmetrical a typical supermassive black hole would be. So this is what we actually expected uh, to see in the center of our own galaxy. And this is what most scientists believe is probably happening there. On the other hand, we also think that the size of the actual supermassive black hole, or at least the size of radiation around it, would also be very large. And so it really surprised many scientists when the results that were just released um, from a paper that you can find in the description below, um, that that's really not what we saw at all. So um, the actual paper is not super easy, and there's actually a lot of, a lot of, um, descriptions and explanations here that don't really show you any actual photos of the black hole. But the results, in essence, show us this. Now, this shows you is the radiation um, that was recreated in um, low radio wave frequency, specifically 86 megahertz, um, in the center of our, of our galaxy. Now, it's sort of similar to what we expected, but there are two major differences. First difference is that we thought this would be much, much bigger. We thought that this is going to be huge. It's much smaller. It's actually way smaller than we expected. On the other hand, we, uh, like I previously showed you, expected this to be asymmetrical. Part of it being bigger, the other part being smaller. And that's also not what we see at all. As a matter of fact, this is very, very symmetrical and very unusually so. 
And for this reason, this will create a lot of debates in the future. This will probably create new theories, new um, speculations, but don't really know what's happening there. And we have definitely no idea why the images that we've received so far don't look like this, but instead look like this. Um, at the same time, uh, this is still not really the best, uh, most accurate study yet, because the event horizon will most likely beat all of this as soon as we get the results, but I guess not just yet. So what does this mean in terms of black hole research? It seems from this research that what they predict and what they actually see are two completely different things. What they expect and what they see are not the same. Now this image on the right is of the data before it was corrected for background scattering. Once they corrected for the scattering, then they got this image. When they induced scattering in their standard approach, they got an image that looked like this. So this is very similar to this, but once they resolve the scattering, then they get this. And this is not what they expected. They did not expect this. So let's have a look at the image that they did see. This is the image that they referred to as being unusually symmetrical. And for the most part, it is. It's much more symmetrical than the image that they were expecting. Um, but I want to point you to these bright lines that were drawn into this picture. Now, these images were from the paper, and what they represent are, um, are uh, intensities of equal value. So all the points on this line would have an intensity of a relatively equal value. And the same with this circle here. And there's another one right on the inside here. Now what I want you to notice is that the inner circle here is on a different axis, has a different axis than the outer circle here. So I'm just going to show you what I see. What I see is that for the inner circle and I see that as the, ax the axis of symmetry of the outer circle and the in-between circle it looks like it's somewhere in between. Let me draw that. This is what I refer to as chiral symmetry. Okay. This is chiral symmetry. I recognize this. Even though it's extremely subtle, I can see the chiral symmetry in this image. Now I'm going to show you. Here is a program I wrote that generates the Julia sets. Okay, on the right here you've got the Julia set. And whenever I pick a point in the Mandelbrot set, whenever I pick a point in the complex plane, it draws the Julia set on the right. And what I want to show you is I recognize that shape because I've seen it before, and it is approximately there. You see as I go away, this is zero, zero on the complex plane right here where, where my arrow is. And when I go away from the center, you see this chiral symmetry. Okay, chiral symmetry is a symmetry that is that is not left-right symmetric. So when I flip this about a vertical axis, it is not going to be the same image. It's going to be a different image. So this reminded me of this. And this on the right is one of the Julia sets that I showed you from my software. Okay, it's uh, somewhere something like that. And that is what I saw. When I first saw this picture, I saw that. Now, if you look at this outer boundary here, you see it's fairly symmetrical, but it's not exactly symmetrical. And same with this outer line here, which is one, one of the uh, intensity lines of this, um, this geometry. And so, it, like I said, it's very subtle, but I recognize it. This is not the same as, let's go back to their original. 
before scattering, they saw basically a, an ellipsoid kind of a symmetry. But once they corrected the images, they saw this, which reminds me of this. And so, um, although this research, this research, because they see this and not that, okay, they see this and not that, they are already wrong. They are not right by their own admission because their simulations predict um, this asymmetrical um, shape up here. And they do not predict this fairly symmetrical, but what I'm calling the chiral symmetry of this. They do not predict chiral symmetry. But I do. In my paper called The Mendelbrot Set as a Quasi-Black Hole, I predict chiral symmetry in and around the region of a black hole. Now you can read this section um, in my paper if you like to. I will leave a uh, link to it in the description. Um, but I just wanted to point out that uh, I talk about this in my paper. Okay, chiral symmetry, here it says here, chiral symmetry is commonly seen in the spiral arms of galaxies. Here's an example here where you see the spiral arms, this spiral arm goes this way. This is Messier 81, by the way, the grand spiral. Okay, so you see one arm comes this way and the other arm comes around that way. And you see these two spiral arms, they look very similar, but they are reversed from each other. They, have, they are inverted from each other. They're not even reflected. If you reflect this image, then this is not going to produce the same image. It's going to produce um, the opposite image. And this is the signature of, a, of chiral symmetry. Okay, here's a few more examples. Here you've got this spiral arm comes up this way and goes that way. This spiral arm comes down and goes that way. This looks the same as that, but they're not a reflected symmetry. In fact, chiral symmetry and Axial symmetry, left-right symmetry, are incommensurate. They're incommensurate principles. They are not the same. And so that's, that's what makes these two geometries, when they come together, these two geometries um, are, are special. Okay? And that's what I'm going to show you here. Okay, here is an example of the Mendelbrot set. Okay, you'll notice that in the black hole region, what I'm calling a black hole, very close to the black hole region, you have a left-right symmetry. But as you go far away from the black hole, now you've got this chiral symmetry. Okay, and the chiral symmetry on this side, it's the opposite of this side. Okay, so when you do a left-right flip of this image, Okay, when you do an, a left, oop, I did an up down flip, sorry. When you do a left right flip of this image, you get the same image in the middle, but you get the opposite. Okay, the outside flips. The outside flips. But when you do a 180 degree rotation, okay, the outside stays the same, but the inside flips. Okay, let's do that again. I'm going to rotate 180 degrees. The inside part rotated 180 degrees. It flipped from up down, from pointing down to pointing up. And the chiral symmetry um, did not change. I'm going to do that one more time. Rotate 180 degrees. The outside stays the same, but the inside flips. But when I do a horizontal flip, well, let's do a vertical flip. If I do a vertical flip, Okay, this flips, okay, and this flips. Okay, if I do a vertical flip, they both flip. If I do a horizontal flip, okay, this, the chiral symmetry flips, but the in, inner geometry doesn't flip. So these, these two geometries, the axial left-right symmetry and the chiral 
symmetry come together in this in this geometry and I think that's what black holes in nature do as well I think when you're far away from the black hole you're going to see a chiral symmetry which I argue is what we are seeing right here I believe that this is a chiral symmetry and as we get closer to the black hole as we get closer to seeing the black hole maybe with the event horizon telescope I believe that it is, is going to transition from a chiral symmetry to some sort of axial symmetry. It might even be a pear shape, just like this, or it might be an egg shape, just like this, or it might be circular as it looks like out here. But the further away you get, the, the stronger the chiral signal is gonna be, and the closer you get, the stronger the axial um, symmetry is going to be. These both work together to form the geometry of the Mandelbrot set, but I believe that chiral symmetry and axial symmetry also work together to form the geometry of the black holes that we see at the center of our galaxy. So long story short, observation seems to be saying that relativistic black holes do not exist in nature. On the other hand, these observations seem to be in favor of the quasi-black holes that I wrote about in my paper, The Mandelbrot Set as a Quasi-Black Hole.